separately. Photoshop and Procreate are powerful tools, but together they become a platform for portable, powerful design creation. I'm gonna show you how to seamlessly benefit from both in a smooth workflow. My name is Marco Cheatham. I'm a freelance art director and illustrator. I've been designing and illustrating for seven years. And one thing that's made being creative easier and increased my productivity is using Procreate to sketch, design, and illustrate frames. Today, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to start your process in Procreate, ways it's made designing easier, and the benefits and ways it can sync with Adobe programs. To take full advantage, you'll need an iPad with the Procreate app, an Apple Pencil, and Adobe Photoshop. In this video, you'll learn to utilize some of Procreate's benefits, sketch easily and block in color, bring Photoshop brushes into the Procreate app, save your files as PSDs, and add finishing touches in Photoshop. Before we begin, make sure you download the project files in the link below so you can follow along. Now we're inside Procreate. So this is an illustration I did a little while ago. We're gonna refine it and you know color block it and take it into Photoshop and put any final details on it in there. Let's get started. So I assume you guys are probably a little bit familiar with the program, so I won't go too far in depth with this, but essentially you have your brushes here. The brushes that have the little icons on it on the left are the brushes that come standard inside Procreate. And the brushes that are up farther that have the little like sketch or whatever you want to call it, brush stroke. Those are the ones that have been installed or created by me. And they all have their own groups that have many brushes within them. When I get started on a project, I like to create a group and add the brushes in there that I'm working on on the project. So with this one, I made a group, I just called it SOM tutorial and I added the brushes that I'm going to use on this project. So there's that. And here's the brush size right here. So you can control the size of your brush. Here is the opacity. So that's good. All right. So I have this rough sketch here. You know, I like to try to start really loose. I like to break down my illustrations into progressions. That way it's easier to digest and, you know, it's less stressful. And I think that that's just a good way of doing things. You know, if you try to design everything at once, it just becomes a little bit more stressful and like convoluted. But as, as long as you like are breaking things down into the little sections as much as you can, the easier it's gonna be on you and your designs. Let's talk a little bit about the brush. So when you're first inside Procreate, by default with your brushes, your pressure sensitivity is probably gonna be pretty low. So if I pick a brush, let's say that this one's pretty good. You're just gonna have to press really hard to have your brush show up thicker, right? So if I'm pressing really light, it doesn't do anything. I have to press pretty hard to have that show up. So to fix that, you just go up to your settings, you go to preferences first, and then you wanna to go to edit pressure curve. And so you're gonna have this curve, it's very linear, and you wanna add a point somewhere, probably in the middle, and you're just gonna use that and make it a curve. I can show you just to exaggerate this so you can see it. And so now I press lightly and it's really thick from the, from the jump. So that's a good way to not mess up your screen. So make sure that's, that's set properly. There's plenty of reasons why you might want to use Photoshop and Procreate for whatever reason. You might just be comfortable with Photoshop more or a different reason. There's several reasons why you might want to use Procreate as well, as well as Photoshop. So like in my case, a lot of times I work with motion studios or people that are doing animation. And a lot of times they're using Photoshop to do the animation if they're doing cell or whatever. And if I'm not using Photoshop brushes, they may not have access to or be able to get close enough to the style that the brushes that I'm using have. So one way to do that is to import Photoshop brushes directly into Procreate, which is really easy to do. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So if you go up to your brush tool right here, you can see that I already have a lot of brushes installed here. And there's a couple ways to do this, but one of the easiest ways to do it is hit this plus sign right here. And you want to go to import. And I've already saved this in here. 
So I just saved it into my Procreate folder inside my iPad. So all I have to do is click on this and it imports automatically. And you can see that right there. And you can see that it's a whole group of brushes so I could use those instantly. Now I want to get more into refining this sketch. And when I'm just working with a rough sketch, I want to be really free with my lines. So I don't want to have any restrictions with them. So I can, you know, really get in there and trying to define these shapes and stuff like that. But once I get like the sketches done and I start to refine things, I want to think less about keeping my lines straight and more about the composition and making sure everything looks good. So. One thing that aids with that is smoothing. So the smoothing allows you, I think they have, they have a similar thing in Photoshop. What it does is just allows you to smooth out your lines pretty much so you don't have to. So if you see now, you know, when I'm drawing my lines are, you know, it can get in there and get really rough. But if you navigate to your brush, you click on it and you see the streamline, you just need to pull that up. I usually keep it around 34, 35, but just so you can really see what it does, I'll show you that. So I'll just hit done. And now you can see that it really helps you keep those smooth lines. Cool. Another thing, when you want to move stuff around, a lot of times people want to nav, you can't see this, but navigate within the box. But when something's really small and you try to do that it's really hard so an easy fix of that which is what you should be doing is just have your cursor outside of the box and move it around that way and then you don't have a problem it could be as small as you want it so that was something i struggled with a while so hopefully that helps alleviate any problems with that so all right let's get started with actually let me turn the smoothing down a little bit so 35. Let's get into actually refining this. So I'm going to go through this and, and start refining this sketch. So now that we're done refining our sketch, what we want to start doing is doing some color blocking. Let's so just make a circle. You know, you press your finger on the screen to create a perfect circle. Go up to the color circle and just drag. So that's going to fill in your shape. And if you want to do any masking inside of that, what you're going to do is create a new layer. You're going to click on that and go to clipping mask. And what that's going to do is allow you to draw inside your layer like so. And you can just draw in there, right? So that's like the non deconstructive way. If you're just illustrating, you don't need to retain your layers or anything like that. There's another way that you could do it. That is also really cool. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So go to your main layer and you're going to want to click that and you want to hit alpha lock. And that's going to allow you to draw with inside your layer. But again, doing this, is not going to retain your layers. So anything you do to it is going to be destructive. So if you need layers, do the other method. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So let's get into the actual color blocking. Okay, so now that we have everything refined and everything, it's time to start the color. When I'm refining, I like to add as much detail as possible. That way, when I get to the next phase, I have less to worry about. And it's all about that progression of like, try to make sure that your future self, the person that's doing the next uh, step has less to worry about. So, you know, if I added, if I start adding the details now, I don't have to worry about that. Then I can focus more on the color and making sure all that stuff is good. So that's what we're gonna do now. With Procreate, if you hit on the colors, the colors are up in this little color circle here. There's a few different ways you can view things, but you also can create color palettes. So in the color palettes, which is to the far right, you have your color palettes here. So these are some that came with the app. So you can delete those or keep those or whatever, and then you can make your own. So this one I've made for this particular illustration. And so how you make a color palette is just hit this plus sign right here. 
and you go to create new palette. So there's a few of these in here where you can upload a photo, you know, you could save a photo to a file and then upload it or take a photo with your camera and then Procreate uses uh, those colors that are from those photos and makes a color palette. It's pretty cool, you know, it's like instantly. So yeah, tr try that out if you find that useful for this. We're just going to create a new palette and all you have to do is find the colors that you want. So like, I'll say, I'll just pick this one and you just tap inside of there and it adds the color and you could just keep doing that until you come up with the color palette you want and yeah, name it and everything like that. So that's as easy as it, you know, pretty much gets. So let's delete this and let's work with the color palette that I have here. So I'm going to start coloring in, make sure you're on a new layer as I'm coloring. I like to keep my sketch on the top layer because it's really hard to see what's going on once you start filling in the colors if the layer is on underneath. And you kind of you want to make sure that you're keeping everything separated, you know. I'm separating this out. That way, if you do if you work with in animation, the animator can separate out your files easily. Um, just makes it a lot easier than doing like a flat illustration. So just make sure you're separating out your layers as you go. And of course, if you don't need to do that, then don't do it. It's not not necessary. It'll just take up time, but just be aware of the process and what you're doing it for. So, you know, if they're doing like sale or something like that, you probably don't need it as much because they're just going to redraw your stuff, but it never hurts to be safe. So, and I'm going to keep on going, finishing this up. Okay, so now that we have everything blocked in, it's time to take this into Photoshop and finish up all the textures that I wanna to add to it. So it's really easy to do. All you need to do is go to your settings, go to share, and you'll have like a list of different exports. You know, you can export it a GIF, you can export it animation, PNGs, different like, things like that. But I wanna export the PSD, so I'll click that and I'll navigate to where I want to save it. Just say file. I've made a folder for this and I'm going to save it in there. And now it's ready to be open in Photoshop. So now we are in Photoshop and as you can see, all of our layers are here and named. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty seamless. The only thing you might need to worry about is any colors that you use. Just make sure they don't sync, like Procreate doesn't sync the colors or the brushes. So just make sure you know what colors you're using and make sure you have the brushes that you're using um, so you can use them inside of Photoshop. So now that everything is all here, I'm going to start adding all of my finishing you know, textures in Photoshop here. That's it. Procreate is a pretty simple yet powerful tool. I love that it's inexpensive, easy to work with, and can scale so quickly for large projects that may need that classic Adobe program. 
If you grabbed a little inspiration and want to try it out, be sure to share your finished products with the hashtag SOM Awesome Procreations. If you want to unlock more advanced skills with Adobe Core programs, check out Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed. Almost every motion graphics project out there passes through these programs in one way or another. This course makes learning Photoshop and Illustrator easy and fun. Starting on the very first day, you'll create art based on real world jobs and get tons of experience working with the same tools that professional motion designers use every day. Hit that subscribe if you want more tips like this one and make sure you click that bell icon so you'll be notified of any future videos. Thanks for watching.